Right then, so we're still in this home widget, but I've deleted the previous code, the text field widget and the text editing controller, because we won't be using those values anymore. Instead, we're going to be working with the built-in form widget, and then inside that form widget, we can use other special form field widgets that have additional functionality that we can make use of, like validation. And we're going to see that later on. So then, the first thing we need to do is make this form widget right here. And then this form widget expects us to pass in a child argument, which is ultimately going to be the content inside this form. Now, what I tend to do is use a column widget as the child, so we can add a bunch of different form field widgets inside that one after the other. So make that column and then register the children field inside the column as well, which is just a list of widgets. Now then, we're not going to be actually making any of the form field widgets in this lesson. But what I am going to do is add some comments in to outline the different fields we'll eventually need. So let me paste in a bunch of those. And you can see that we need a form field for a to do title, one for the to do description, one for the priority of the to do and then a submit button as well. So what we'll be doing with this form then is basically adding new to do's, right? And these are the three different things that each to do needs a title, a description and a priority. So then we're going to come back to the different form fields for these three things later on. But what I'll do now is just add the cross axis alignment argument into this column as well so that I can align all the elements inside this column to the right by default. So we choose the end property to do that. And then also I'm going to make a submit button at the bottom of the column too, which a user will eventually click on to add this new to do that we enter into the form. So then let's first create a sized box to give us some breathing room. So const sized box and the height of this is going to be 20 pixels. And then underneath that, we need a filled button. And inside that filled button, we need a few things. First of all, the on pressed handler, which is a function. We'll keep that empty for now. Later on, we'll submit the form inside this function. Then also, I'm going to apply a little bit of style to this. So the way I style a button is by taking the button, first of all, filled button, and then using a method on that called style from. I find this is the easiest way to style a button. And then inside there, oops, we don't need that argument. Inside this, we'll say the background color of this will be colors dot gray, and then pass in a strength of 800. So like a dark gray. And then also I want to apply a bit of border radius, just a little bit. So we'll say shape for that. And the shape is going to be a rounded rectangle border. Inside this, we need to specify the border radius. So the property name is border radius like so. The value is border radius. And then we can use the circular method on that and pass in a radius of about four. So it just softens the corners a little bit. Now, finally, we need after the style, a child argument which is going to be a text widget and inside here we'll just say add and it's complaining because we've not made this a constant so let's do that as well and that is the button created right here we have the add button right now okay then so now we have a form widget and inside that a column which only contains a button at present but later we'll add form fields for all these different things inside here as well. First though there's one other thing we need to do and that is to add a key property to the form widget. Now, keys are used in many, many different places in Flutter applications for different things, and there's different types of keys too. When it comes to using a key with the form widget, that key is going to be able to access and keep track of the form state for us. And then later on, we can use that key to do things like validate the form, save the form to access the data within it, and so forth. Now, the type of key we need to give to a form is a global key. And global keys are unique keys which provide access to widgets and objects associated with that widget. In this case, that's going to be the form widget. So let's make this global key, first of all, at the very top of the home widget somewhere. And to do that, we'll make a final variable called underscore form global key. Underscore just means it's private. And then we set that equal to a global key object. Now, this function right here is a generic function. And we can pass in a type within angle brackets, which in this case should be form state. And that tells Flutter that this global key will be essentially working with, be working with a form or form state. And it allows us then to validate and save that form data at some point. 
All right, so that's the global key created. Now we just need to scroll right back down to the form widget and assign that global key to the form as a value to the key argument. And then uh, that's it, my friends. That's pretty much it. We've now made a new form widget and assigned a global key to that form so we can access its state later on using that key. We also have a button to submit the form, but doesn't really do much yet. In the next lesson, we'll be making a couple of form fields for the title and the description of the new to-do.